Hey YouTube, it's been far too long since I've had a chance to post a video. It is the 7th of October in Canada, which means it's Thanksgiving weekend. So I've got about 30 minutes to myself. Uh, work's been busy, life's been busy, and even from a, a maker standpoint, I've just been just too busy doing actual things. I've been printing up a storm with uh, Gridfinity organizers on my brand new 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab X1C, and I also sprung for the AMS. What's that printer, you say? It's the wildly successful, almost too good to be true, will it live up to the hype 3D printer that features all sorts of sensors to make calibration-free printing with kind of LiDAR-assisted uh, linear flow compensation and calibration just work. Um, from a personal testimony standpoint, just to get it out of the way, I think it actually lives up to the hype. I think it's obviously got some quirks and issues that it's got to get worked out over time. It's a first generation product from a company that, you know, really started up, but they have they have a lot of success so far. However, with all the positives comes some negatives. There have been some issues with AMS uh, plastic injection mold parts breaking, uh, to which they released, you know, 3D printed files of print this part and glue it into the machine to reinforce the parts to crack. Uh, and they actually iterated that already, and they still didn't get it right. So, I mean, yeah, they, they've been kind of hit or miss on a couple small things, but for the most part, it lived up to the hype. And a lot of people have been reporting positive things about their customer support, positive things about their spare parts availability. Don't get me wrong, no company is perfect, and I think any company should be willing to listen to feedback and respond to the community. So, without further ado, I want to talk about a specific issue that I had and I think I might be one of the only few people who've actually uh, posted something about this, and as far as I know, I'm the first person to put something on YouTube about it. What happened? The other day, I had a 3D print running, and actually, because I accidentally selected a stock profile, I forgot to turn on uh, the time-lapse function. And what happened, but a loud clanging noise from uh, the other room that the 3D printer's in, and suddenly uh, I get a, a message on my phone from the app saying, you know, print pause due to error, the magnetic cover on the hot end fell off, which is a really strange error to see because there shouldn't be any reason for that magnetic cover on the hot end to come off. So you can see in this photo, there was a bit of a gory show. The filament had kind of pushed itself through the hot end and the hot part uh, the, the, the actual hot end pushed itself or the heat break tube broke and otherwise just a bad time. The only reason why the front cover popped out was because the filament built up too much uh, bulk inside that extruder head. Um, one other thing that I noticed was that the wiper in the back, there's a little um, kind of compliant flexure with a PTFE tube built into it, it's used to um, to wipe off the nozzle tip just to get any stringy bits on the tip removed when it's doing filament swaps and uh, pre-calibration cleanup. But either way, that was broken as well. Um, shut everything down, cooled everything off, uninstalled the hot end, and this is what I ended up finding. All right, so um, this is the hot end. Normally it would be installed like this if you were looking face towards the printer. Um, you've got a couple sets of leads here. You've got the uh, extruder heater leads. You've got a four lead for the fan, which is probably a two lead power, one lead uh, RPM, one lead PWM speed control. And you've got this pair of uh, leads, which is the uh, temperature sensor, some kind of a thermistor. But um, this is what I found on the other side of it. The heat break tube, where's my pointing device? I had it here a moment ago. The heat break tube is allegedly titanium. And you can see here where the shoulder of the hot end itself was press fit onto here. Somehow this entire um, heater, not heater cartridge, but heater assembly pushed itself off and then just filament started pushing out um, free running, some of it melting on the tip of the hot end. Now, fortunately, 
the printer stopped itself and fortunately I was able to uh, you know attend to the printer relatively quickly but uh, this is what a brand new one looks like this this is actually the spare part that came with the printer um, it's another 0.4 millimeter nozzle you can actually see um, the engraving on the heatsink and you can see here that there's only about two and a half millimeters or so between the heat sink itself and the uh, heat block where the melt zone for the filament is. And you can see on this one where there is more of this titanium tube that extends out past and uh, yeah, clearly something went terribly, terribly wrong. Now, the fact that the wiper was broken off, actually one moment, found my uh, bits and pieces of the wiper. The fact that the wiper was broken off, um, it normally would look like this. Yeah, so the fact that this was broken off and the fact that this was ejected, but there was no bend here, there's no deformation on the heat heater block itself, kind of implies that this thing was trying to do a filament change, pushed itself out, and then when it tried to do the wipe off, this entire thing crashed. Um, caused a lot of noise that I could hear from the other room and, you know, hopefully nothing wrong has happened to my printer's kinematics, the uh, core XY mechanics inside the printer that make all the magic happen. Now, I'm trying to figure out why this would have happened, and in that process I contacted uh, Bamboo Lab Technical Support. I put in a ticket, I sent the photos, explanation of what was happening, and I even attached the logs that the printer generated. Um, whether or not they actually do anything for that particular problem, I don't know. Uh, it seems like there is some kind of proprietary format, or I just don't know how to obviously get into the logs, but either way, how will the logs tell you why a physical, mechanical bond or press fit between titanium and what I can only presume is uh, some kind of hardened steel, uh, according to the um, the website, the black heat sinks are hardened steel uh, intended for um, abrasive filaments like carbon fiber, uh, uh, carbon fiber PA or uh, carbon fiber nylon rather. Poly. Oh man, I'm drawing a blank right now. But um, either way, the hardened steel nozzle didn't really fail, the bond between the titanium tube and the nozzle itself failed. Um, underneath the silicone sock, just for those in case you are relatively uninitiated, the uh, assembly is actually quite well designed, and I'm just trying to be gentle here to remove this. I'm sure I'm going to regret this because I'm going to get silicone heat uh, heat transfer compound all over my fingers, but um, you can see here that there is a metal clip and there is a flat ceramic chip heater that uh, clamps straight onto the thing and then there's a little tiny pocket on the side here where the uh, thermistor goes. Um, quite a clean and compact design. It, the engineering team are made up from uh, XTJI Labs employees. Kudos to them for doing a good job. This is more of a material science and uh, to a lesser degree engineering problem. Hardened steel and titanium that aren't welded together, realistically a mechanical failure might just be a matter of time. Uh, it might be dependent on how much this hot end experiences vibration, it might be a matter of how many times it kind of rubs up against uh, prints that kind of, instead of printing a flat line, they print a, uh, they have a bit of wobble, especially with um, the first flat layer after, after infill, tend to peel up a little bit on the edges. Uh, but otherwise, this is what happened. Now fortunately, I was lucky enough to uh, be one of the Kickstarters, and I actually got a full, uh, fully assembled hot end. So, at least credit to where credit's due, I managed to crack open this box and switch out the entire hot end assembly, um, including cooldown time, in 20 minutes. Uh, I ran the, the self-test, everything passed, 
and uh, sure enough, it uh, it works. I mean, I don't have any uh, fully assembled hot ends. That actually, the Kickstarter gift came with a full um, uh, extruder gearbox, as well as um, two more nozzles at 0.6 and 0.8, as well as uh, some assembly shoulder screws for uh, mounting the hot ends on. Now, when I put my ticket in, I got in contact with uh, support over at Bamboo Lab, and they said that they observed a small number of failures like this. Maybe it's a matter of time till they observe more, maybe it really is just a general number of, uh, you know, bad units in the field. I might be one of the unlucky ones. That said, they did immediately say they would send me a full, well, they, they said they would send me a hot end. Uh, my question was actually on the assumption that I would only get this part. And I said, hey, do you have specifications for the resistance on the heater and the temperature coefficient on the thermistor so that I can run electrical tests myself? Like, the fact that I knew that this is a titanium heat break tube and the fact that I can describe exactly how it failed should inform a technical support person that, hey, I kind of, I know my stuff. I can hold my own in a conversation and uh, they, instead of just disclosing what the specs were so I could test if these were going to be good before I transfer them over, they actually said that they're just going to send me an entire fresh assembly. Um, I'm probably still going to poke around with this a little more, so maybe in the future there's going to be an update video. Uh, what I might do is actually try and manually power this up, heat it up, um, get this plastic on the inside out, and try and see if it's even possible to refit these two together, but my suspicion is that that will not be possible. Um, either this is a expansion fit, um, and I actually should look up what the difference between like a hardened steel versus a titanium for coefficient of thermal expansion is. But my bet would be that the titanium is supposed to expand more than the stainless steel, or not the stainless steel, but the hardened steel. Therefore, this gets tighter as the heat block heats up. Uh, would be my guess. Um, because I, I can't see any obvious signs of any kind of adhesives. But uh, then again, it's such a microscopically thin layer. It's, very hard to tell. Um, if that was the case, what they probably did was they cooled this part down to a cold temperature, press fit it in with a jig, and then let the whole thing expand to the point where it's, uh, you know, assembled again. Uh, in which case I might still be able to do it if I put this in the freezer or use a piece of dry ice to cool this block down and jam that on. Sure. Um, I'll have to definitely measure the distance here, make a jig, and make sure that uh, whatever I do to put this back on actually holds. And then there is that burning question, is it worth it to me? The whole point of buying a Bamboo Lab printer as a Kickstarter, taking a chance, was I want a printer that's not a hobby project. I don't want uh, a printer that I have to spend more time maintaining than, uh, than actually printing. Now, so far, it's been great. I've actually gone through about four kilos of filament uh, in about a week yeah, more like two, three weeks now. Um, honestly, time flies, but still. I've gone through quite a bit of filament with no issue, and um, honestly, I should have known something was up because when I started the print, the print quality seemed a little bit off. It seemed like the, um, the hot end was too close to the bed, so maybe it was already starting to push away, um, like the, the heater block was already starting to push off of the heat break tube, in the process of the first 10, 15 layers of the print, and it was just incremental in a matter of time uh, before it finally just gave way. So, um, yeah, that is my experience with this failure on um, this hot end. Now, I'll be curious to see if anyone else has had similar issues. I'll be curious to see if um, Bamboo Labs has told them anything different, because ultimately I believe in transparency uh, with companies, especially given the fact that uh, Bamboo Labs is, you know, not explicitly riding on the coattails of some of the open source work in the community, but definitely uh, there was some controversy about the source code behind their uh, Bamboo Studio software, which used uh, open source uh, open source licensed code, which required you to publish the source code for your project. 
um, which initially they didn't and eventually they acquiesced because everyone spoke up about it. So my message to the viewer is this, if you have a problem like this, don't just contact support, post about it online because it forces companies to be transparent. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I think Bamboo Labs actually is a pretty good company. They have their act together with customer support, they've been transparent with the AMS problems where you have to print some plastic parts, glue them in to reinforce the, you know, the breaking um, injection molded parts. Now, I honestly think that they will also go and fix the injection molds so that future iterations of the AMS will not have that flaw. Um, but they're also more than willing to just own up and admit and say, hey, like, you know, our bad, we're trying to make this right, here's how you make it right without having to go through the hassle of sending a big blocky unit back and getting another one back and hoping it all ships okay, you know. In the end, I'm still happy with my purchase. But I wanted to put this video out there to just say that this is a problem that may happen to you. Um, so, don't leave your printer unattended. As slick as the Bamboo Lab X1C is, it is still a 3D printer, and despite having certifications, etc., it is still uh, a heated device. And there are flammable materials in proximity. I'm sure that they picked some, you know, good materials for this, what looks like a fairly custom uh, fan for the hot end. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got plastic filament, whether it's um, PLA, PETG, ABS, um, nylon, carbon fiber nylon. No matter what, almost all of those are going to have some flammability, and especially because this is a failure point, right? It's going to feed more fuel to any kind of a fire that sparks up. So don't leave your printer unattended is, is the other message. I've seen pictures of printer fires. People have lost their entire homes, their livelihoods, and had to start from scratch if, you know, uh, if that terrible outcome happens. Um, make sure you put smoke detection in your printer, etc. You know, all the sensible precautions you should be using with a soldering iron, you wouldn't leave it unattended. So with that, that's this video. Um, short and to the point, if you liked the video, please like, subscribe, comment. As inactive as this channel is, every so often I will post something and at least you're going to see a couple videos go in quick succession after this one, just as I try and get rid of this backlog of ideas and things I want to get out of my mind. So with that, peace out.